Hey, it's Eric Alkren, and welcome to another Michigan's Best Podcast. All month long, we are celebrating Black History Month with the help of McDonald's, and today we are talking to Chenille Dominique. Who is Chenille? Well, you will know her name by the time this is over and by the time 2021 comes to a close. This is a woman who left a six-figure job with Verizon to go start her own dream, and you will be blown away at where she is right now. The story is incredible. I hope you enjoy this podcast. And as I said, my guest on this podcast, I am so excited for this one. Chanel, Dominique, uh, how are you, first of all? And I have a ton of questions, secondly. I am doing very well for a wonderful Friday. I hope you're doing well. Um, but I'm, I'm doing good, and I'm excited for this. So I'm ready for your question. So, Chanel, you know, we're celebrating Black History Month with McDonald's, and you were one of the people that we wanted to talk to. And I specifically wanted to talk to you because your story, I've been doing this with McDonald's for almost five years, and your story is so counter to every other story I have told in these podcasts in the fact that, you seemingly had the thing that everybody wants and you were like, yeah, that's not really the thing. So I'm going to leave the thing and go do the thing that I'm drawn to do. And by that, I mean, you had a six figure job in corporate America and you're like, Meh, I got a dream. Let's go do that. And I like walk me through all of that stuff. Like how, for how long when you're in corporate America is that thing in your soul going ah, like just biting at you and going, yeah, yeah, the money is great, but like you, you belong over here friends. So I'm going to push you in that direction. So for one, I'm a tourist and I learned um, actually just re- recently how opposed I am to higher authority when it comes to business. It's like, I'm so bullheaded and it it's, I, I, I cannot take uh, control. Like I've got to, I've got to have some type of control, but I've learned to bring that down a notch. So, I mean, for me, I've always loved small business and I've always loved what small business means to any community, to any state. And um, in Verizon Wireless, when I was working for them, I was one of the youngest, on the business account executive team, fresh out of college, just moved back home to Detroit. And it was an experience that opened me up to how much I loved and adored owning my own business or um, operating my own business. And um, I would work with, as a small business account executive, we worked with small the small business sector five, zero, well, it started out with zero to 99 employees. And then I got promoted and I was working from five to uh, 200 to 300 employees. And they had actually created a position for me because I started in retail and I was selling to small businesses in the area. And I was knocking out as a retail rep, five to six lines per customer. And that just caught, that just automatically goes, raises questions of, are you selling business or are you selling consumer? And, um, They created this position and moved me out to Southfield, uh, Michigan, and I had to create a schedule. I had to commit to being on the road for a certain amount of hours, being in the office for a certain amount of hours, and then quotas. And the quota thing is what really drove me away. I loved talking to small business owners, finding out what it is that thrilled them and what made them get started. How can I help be a solution finder for them? And the moment it would come in and was like, okay, you're like five short of making $10,000. Like, what are you going to do in these 24 hours? Or I would have colleagues that were really not as well off as far as getting sales. And they would be on the brink of losing their job. And I was just like, this is not how I want to live. Walking on eggshells, not sure if I get enough sales and I'm going to get fired or not. And I was like, well, I'm going to create my own scenario and make my own sales and fire myself and rehire myself. And um, that's that's where it started. I started throwing parties on the weekends. I would work nine to five, Monday through Friday at Verizon. And I would throw parties with my best friends in Detroit on the weekends. We would have a blast. We would try to get as many people out to come party with us as possible. And we, we tried to not do so much as parties, but create an experience. And I was then awakened again. You're not selling phones. Now you're selling an experience. A few artists reached out to me from that and wanted to know about management. And I've always been a music lover. I've always loved hip hop. I would be the the one on Twitter going back and forth about the latest Jeezy 
uh, beef battle with Gucci Man at the time. And it just made sense. So I, I, I did it. I actually kept the crown and the title of working at Verizon Wireless while still running the running the business in the beginning, just trying to figure it out. I wanted yeah. to make sure people could provide. Um, and then I ran into the artist I'm working with now, Icewear Bezo. And we started going like singles on the radio, we're getting shows. And I was like, oh, it's time to go. And I just jumped off the porch. So, so, so let me pause you for a second, because you and I don't know each other, but I worked in radio at a top 40 radio station that leaned hip hop. So I know what you, the crucible you're going through. So when, when you and Ice meet for the first time, what happened with the chemistry and how did you know that he was the one, right? Because when you work in on my side, I meet a thousand of you a week, right? And <laughs> one of them is successful and you guys have turned this into, and I'll, I want to get into this stuff, but you've turned this into an incredible enterprise. And that's one of the 9,000 things that you do. That's just yeah. one. <laughs> So when, yeah. you, you know, when you meet him, what happens with that meeting and how do you know he's the one let's, you know, court, you know, cart horse, however you want to put that scenario in and let's go. You know, it's so funny. Um, so I met him through mutual friends, a couple of friends of mine from high school started a label, uh, indie label in the city. And at the time, again, Detroit hip hop was like exile. No one was thinking about it. And it was just like, oh, you rap. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Whatever. What else do you do? And so when I sat down and I met with my my friends at the time, who then became who are now my partners, um, we just had this discussion about this artist they were working with, and I was like, "Well, if he popping, if he doing all that, I, I want to meet him. Let me see." And for me, it was I had this confidence level of I can sell anything. Like Verizon had drilled into me, I could sell water to a freaking ocean, and I could. Sell- <laughs> I, I was just like, I don't care what it is. As long as it's, it, it has a good public appearance, I can sell it. And when I met him, it was so crazy because the first thing I said to him was like, what do you have on? We were just like, we instantly clashed. <laughs> but then we instantly in that same conversation understood each other and knew we would do business with each other. And it was a few months down the line, our first show, a big stage show, was Big Sean bringing him out at DTE Energy. And that's when I knew, like, we felt the energy together of this huge crowd receiving him and we were just getting started. And I I, I instantly was just like, I think this is gonna be the artist that I work with for a very long time, if not forever. And it, it went from there. We just, it, it just hit, it was just the perfect organic mix of the corporate America and the, 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 the business that you learn growing up and just coming from the streets and his background, meshing them together and creating an empire that is unstoppable. And so I want to talk about that empire building because it, it fascinates me because it's one thing to be an independent artist. It's another thing to be an independent artist that's successful. It's another thing to be an independent artist that's successful and continues to be successful, mm-hmm. right? That snowball effect that you roll downhill. Yeah. But but you guys made a movie. Like, <laughs> like wh- again, what what is that process like? I mean, I know he wrote it when he was in jail, but when you guys get out, it's on Amazon. It, it's all over the place. It's the number one independent urban film that's been streaming since no since november uh yeah. now i know we're, we're all locked in our homes so we have plenty of time to stream things but it's still an incredible feat right uh yeah. so what was that like where did that even come from how did you morph from music to movies i mean there's a there's a natural progression in the storytelling in hip-hop but how did that how did you match pitch, pictures with that so for me, I have to say this, the movie was all Vezo. Like he has a mind that is untapped. It's full of creative. It's full of just different ideas and businesses that he wants to launch and do. And when he came with the movie, it was it was just thing where it was like, he didn't care who said what, he was doing it. And he, did not care. he wrote this movie on a milk carton and the milk. And this was while he was incarcerated. Of course, we we went through what we went through. Sure. And, yeah. And and doing so while he was locked up in the in the hole, he wrote this movie script on a milk carton. He came home and he said, "I'm doing it. 
I want to do it. I still, I'm still focused on my career, but this is what I'm doing. Now, mind you, when he comes home, we're getting ready to sign the Motown records. Yep. So it was like, uh, we got to focus on the music career, but he was, that is one of the most um, strong-minded and determined artists or, or men I've met in a very long time. He does not take no for an answer. And that is something I admire out of him. And that's how this movie came to where it is right now. All the way down to like every piece of building out the movie, shooting the movie. He made sure he stayed true to what he felt. He made sure that he included brands that he feels passionate about. He made sure he empowered his cast to understand that they're just as important as the cameraman and anyone else involved. So if this is just like a progressive growth, like there'll be, there's so much more that's coming. It, music was just the start. It was like the opening door and the opening gate to get there. Once it was open, it's, there's, I'm pretty sure Vezo will want us to open up an amusement park. He's getting ready to open up a juice bar. I mean, the, he is definitely ahead of the game, ahead of his, 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 his generation. I'm very honored to be able to help him push it through and structure the business side for him. But this is something that, I mean, the world just got to get ready. He's coming with series. He's got more movies. And it's, it's, it's a dynamic that when you know it's right, it's right. We dropped this movie in the middle of a pandemic and it's been picking up and it, it goes hand in hand with people understanding and, and finding Bezo as an artist and being attached to his whole brand, not just him as a rapper understanding him as an entrepreneur, a father, um, a, a actor, because he loves acting a lot more than he does rapping at times. So, you know, for us, it just kind of feels like turn of the page, just something that we had, we were supposed to do as creatives. We just continue to create. And you said in an earlier interview, uh, probably mid year last year, when uh, I forget who was asking you about, um, management and artists coming to you and asking to you and your entrepreneurial spirit uh, is obviously very strong and you're doing a lot of things of which we're going to continue to get into in this interview but the one thing in that interview that struck me as so profound because so many people and I think people who even watch the interview probably gloss over it so many people miss this lesson the lesson is to tell people no Right. Yeah. You know, and so can you talk to me about your philosophy on your time management, not only in your personal life with your kids, but your professional life and kind of managing, you know, when you're going to say yes to a project and when you're going to say no or when you're going to consult all that sort of stuff. Um, so for me, I like to always make sure I can give whatever project I'm working 100 percent of me, even if I'm working multiple projects. I've come to a place to know me and know how I operate. And if I can't give you 100%, I've got to say no. Because if I say yes, I'm going to overpromise and underdeliver. And I just know that when you come to know yourself and as an entrepreneur, you accept certain things. And that's something that I can accept without a doubt is that I'm not going to sign on to a project or an artist where I can't give you 100% of my authentic me. And my. that's why you're coming to me because you've seen my work and my work is a reflection of 100% of my energy, 100% of my time. And if that's what you're looking for, if I can't provide that for you, I have to tell you no. One, for men, my own mental health. I mean, I, I've, I've been in scenarios where I've taken on way too much. And although nothing failed to me, it, it still was a failure to me as a, a professional because I couldn't even live in that moment to understand all of the hats I wore in that one moment, in that one way. And I've learned it's always, it's not always about the quantity, but about the quality of the work you provide. And if I can't give you hundred percent quality of me, I just, I can't take the project. And, and until I even hire more people on my team that I can trust to take on certain projects and I can oversee it, I, I can't, I can't even accept it until then. Because I, my name is just everything. And I feel like if I can't step in and, like I said, give you what you've been reaching out to me for in the first place, which is all of me, then there's only so much I can do. And I have to say no. Absolutely. And so, Chanel, you've got a lot of things going on. You're working on a lot of amazing things. But the, the next thing on the docket, and this is fascinating to me because – 
I'm mesmerized by during all of, of COVID and we're now in the 12th month of this, there's ostensibly been two types of people, people where COVID is happening to them and people who are doing things along with COVID. Right. This is a this is a reality. I'm just going to work around it and I'm going to do my thing, which you are clearly in that camp. Right before we started talking, you said you've got a new exciting project going on. And I want to talk about how does somebody like you find time to launch a snack company along with all of the other things that you've got going on. So tell me about the snack company and when will things show up in stores and what's going on with that? The snack company is something I prayed about. I've always, again, going back to selling this product for Verizon. I made them so much money. I made myself a lot of money. But I love to sell a product. I love to just introduce something that will blow your mind. And to have ownership in it is a whole entirely different prayer packet. And um, I, I absolutely am in a position to where I'm building generational wealth. I preach it into my clients. I preach it into every everyone and every person around me. Um, and with that, I have to I had to start looking at other ways outside of my music career and entertainment industry. What is something that will change and fully digestively change the course of my background, my family, my kids, and. I was introduced to um, a, a very prominent, uh, amazing businessman from Detroit who had a brand for snack com- for a snack company already and was just ready to really figure out another route for it. And I was able to step in and get some ownership out of it, a lot of ownership out of it to where it's mine. And, and I've got this thing launching in March. I'm hoping to launch on Detroit Day, 313 Day, because... <laughs> I mean, I I have a com- a clothing company called Detroit Support Detroit, and now I'm launching a snack company where a lot of my manufacturers and distributors are based right out of Michigan and Detroit. Um, so I just felt like it would be the most influential and fulfilling thing for me personally on a professional level too, was to be able to provide it on a day that's monumental for Detroit, where I came from. So this snack company, I looked at it and I said, I mean, in the middle of a pandemic, no matter what we go through, people got to eat. So we eating. And that's the name of it. <laughs> we eating. That's amazing. Eating. So yes. so how how big is the line? Like, what does it look like? What are the flavors? Those are like, I, I'm excited we about this. So I, I, I can't get enough of this. So I'm going to be, it's, a, it's more of an influencer chip. So I'm going to be launching this chip and I'm going to, um, pick out different influential people that can create their own flavor. They'll also have ownership in their brand or in their line of the chip as well, which is another thing I love is that I have on I own this chip company and I can give every influencer involved with it ownership in the chip as well in the brand that they put out or the line or flavor that they put out. So um, I am right now excited to, be able to provide um, a, a sense of ownership. Um, the biggest thing is that these owners are gonna be able to pick whatever flavor they love. Like if you like barbecue honey, we're gonna make a barbecue honey chip. Maybe if you want it on a popcorn, barbecue honey popcorn. But I'm going to document on the first runs, we're already in the process of doing this, the entire, the entire process from picking the flavor, choosing the design bag and where you'll see it at in stores. We are going to all local stores throughout the entire Midwest. And then we're also going to go down into the South and we're looking at partnering or going into some Costco stores as well. So to just be getting started, we're, we're definitely keeping it as a regional brand and we're branching out within that first six months as well. Like I'm, this is going to be a fast paced growth for us. So, wow. Thank you. That's amazing. So, uh, so what, what else do you want to do? It seems like, like what is, what's next, right? You've got, you've got artist and entertainment management. You've got consulting going on. You've got a clothing line, Detroit supports Detroit. Now you've got an influencer equity chip company. What, what, what now, 
when are you going to have your own building in Detroit? Like, what are we, what are we doing next oh, year? That's, coming. that's definitely coming. <laughs> I have a studio right now. We do have our own studio, but the goal is to create a building where I can hire. Uh, I just cannot wait to hire people off the streets and get them jobs and just real, a real a real home to come to that's not just a job. Like I've always felt like where you work should be where you have a piece as well. Um, so I'm excited to provide more opportunities for this entire community. I'm excited to expand out even the music side and being able to present this marketing and advertising tool to artists. And it's all through the workings that I've been doing. Um, I think the biggest thing is just really being just happy. And I've been in a very happy space, but I want to be completely just happy. Like that's the next thing. I've got these businesses. My kids are great. I'm planning a wedding. Everything is, everything is great. And now I just want it all. I just want to sit back and, and be able to enjoy it all and be happy about it and live in peace. It's just so much going on that I don't want to overdo it to where even when one business is kind of slow and I got a minute, I can really focus on my kids or spend some me time. Like I don't want to be stressing over 13 other companies either. So I like the balance I have right now. And I feel like I'm, I don't need seven streams. I just need the streams that work for me and the streams that are able to create a general generational wealth scenario for my family and change lives of those around me. I've always, Pray that I would be able to bless millions of people through my work and inspiration of what I do. And whether that was them, me being able to hire them or them just being blessed or, or being able to bless them through my story. And that's, that's just my focus now that I've got these companies up and moving and going. That's my goal is to be able to inspire and bless people through my story and in ways that they need help to get to their next level and bust out of their glass ceiling. That's awesome. Chanel, this has been an absolute joy to talk to you. I am so excited for the chip company coming on Detroit Day. Uh, fingers yeah. crossed, you know, as we, we go through all of this stuff and, and you know better than most, like best laid plans, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. But we are so excited. This is ju just an incredible body of work and I wish you the best in 2021 and cannot wait to talk to you again. Be well. Yes, same here. I'm going to make sure I get you all some samples of those chips too. I want I you to... Be the first to get some grab bags. So. I cannot wait, my friend. Be well. Thank you. You as well. And have a great, great weekend. And there she goes. Told you. An incredible human being that I could talk to for about another hour and a half. Huge thanks to McDonald's for sponsoring this series for Black History Month. Till next time, I'm Eric Hulkerin, and this is the Michigan's Best Podcast.